Hey everyone, Intuitive and Astrologer Lisa Salvatore here to talk to you about the remainder of December, the entrance of Capricorn season and the winter solstice, and also our final new moon of 2022 that takes place on December 23rd. Today that I'm recording this video, it is December the 18th, and we are so close to the end of this year and the momentum is picking up. We all sense some big shifts coming in. There's a lot of change, there's a lot of growth, there's a lot of energy. First thing that I want to mention is on December 20th, Jupiter is going to re-enter the sign of Aries. Jupiter will enter the sign of Aries 9.32 a.m. Eastern Time on December 20th. And this is a big deal because Jupiter is a big energy. Jupiter is very expansive. Jupiter is all about benevolency and hope and possibility and potential. It's about tremendous spiritual growth. It's about taking opportunities as they come in and having faith. Now. This is especially significant if you have strong Aries placements. So if you have an Aries sun, an Aries moon, Aries rising, or if your Jupiter falls in the sign of Aries, this is going to be very expansive and very positive energy for you. You can expect to see some growth, but again, we always have to take the chances. We always have to take those steps in order to receive all of the goodness that Jupiter offers. But Jupiter in Aries is going to be big for everybody. So you're going to want to look to your chart, to your own personal chart, and see where Aries falls because the part of your birth chart that contains Aries is going to be the part that's going to get a boost from Jupiter from now until May while Jupiter is in the sign of Aries. So not only are you going to want to look to the part of your chart that contains Aries, but you're also going to want to think back to June of 2010 through July of 2011. And I know that I'm asking you to dig deep here, but if you can think back to that time period and look at if anything significant or what of significance was going on for you, because this was likely a direct reflection of Jupiter and Aries at that time. Jupiter has a 12 year orbit and Jupiter spends one year in each sign. And there's usually a spiritual awakening that takes place in the area of your life where Jupiter spends that solid year. Now again, Jupiter is very helpful. Jupiter is very hopeful. Jupiter can bring in a lot of success, but we have to utilize the energy properly. We have to be aware of it. We have to be spiritually aware of it. And if we can follow the guidance, the spiritual guidance of what Jupiter is trying to teach us, Jupiter is the teacher, the guru, we can grow leaps and bounds and it can be really beautiful and really beneficial. And while a lot of times Jupiter will gift us things, a lot of times we also have to take the steps to accept what Jupiter is offering. I know that it sounds very nebulous, but it's really not. All you have to do is remain in your integrity, be positive and work hard. And what is yours will not pass you by. Again, look to the part of your chart that contains Aries for more details about where you can expect some Jupiterian goodness. I've linked a quick video below to show you how to identify your Jupiter and also how to see where Aries falls in your chart. So again, while everybody will benefit from this energy, those with strong Aries placements are going to benefit from it the most. Now this also takes on extreme significance because Aries is the first sign of the Zodiac and Aries is a cardinal sign. The cardinal signs initiate things. They get things started. They are the movers and the shakers of the Zodiac. This is a very strong energy again of initiation. And so having Jupiter at zero degrees of Aries is very significant for growth and movement. So ask yourself, where does Aries fall in your chart? And set some intentions there to be bold, to be courageous in the area of your life, of your chart that is ruled by Aries. And you will likely see some significant opportunities for growth come in through this area of your life while Jupiter is in the sign of Aries. Now on December 21st, the sun moves into the sign of Capricorn. Happy birthday, Capricorn. It is officially your season. This takes place at 4.48 p.m. Eastern time and we experience the winter solstice here in the Northern Hemisphere. It's going to be summer for our friends in the Southern Hemisphere. But the solstice points are always points and passages of time that bring in fresh, strong energy. This is about turning over a new leaf, this is about setting intentions about where we want to go next. Capricorn is also a cardinal sign. So while the sun is at zero degrees of Capricorn, Jupiter is also going to be at zero degrees of Aries. This is a big energy about taking action or making a plan to take action. This is a strong energy of getting things done. It's not going to be immediate, but this is about plotting the course, sowing the seeds. Capricorn is a cardinal earth sign. It is all about results. It is all about climbing higher and higher until we achieve the desired results. Now, soon after Capricorn season begins, we have our final new moon of 2022, and it takes place on December 23rd. 
in the sign of Capricorn. New moons happen when the sun and the moon align in the same sign. And this is not only the final new moon of 2022, but it is also a super moon, which basically means it is closer to us. So we feel it more strongly. It's that much more impactful. It's that much more powerful. This new moon is also at one degree. It is the second out of five new moons that fall at that first degree. And the first degree, the one, is all about manifestation. It's all about planting seeds. It's all about fresh energy and it's all about possibility and potential, laying the groundwork. This is extremely significant. We've got Jupiter in Aries, we've got the Sun now in Capricorn, two cardinal signs at the very, very beginning, and now we've got this new moon at one degree of Capricorn. So again, this is very indicative of fresh beginnings, a fresh start, pressing the reset button in some form or fashion in some place in your life. This new moon takes place at 5.17 a.m. Eastern time, and I'm going to pull the chart up in a moment. And again, it's at one degree. Now, at the time of this new moon, we now have five planets in the sign of Capricorn. And this is good because Capricorn is a sign that likes to get it done. All business. This is the work now, play later sign. We've got the sun in Capricorn, we've got the moon in Capricorn, we've got Mercury and Venus in Capricorn, and we've got Pluto in Capricorn. So you're definitely going to want to look to your chart and see the part of your chart that contains Capricorn. And you're going to want to set some intentions in this area of your life, in these areas of your life, because you will likely see a big boost here. So you're going to want to look to the part of your chart that contains Aries, because that's where Jupiter is going to be transiting. And you're going to want to look to the part of your chart that contains Capricorn and set some intentions here. And I'm also going to give it to you by sign as to where this new moon falls. But this is an energy here. This is a new moon that's all about making a plan. It's all about building. It's all about a strategy. It's all about networking. It's all about getting real about what's possible and what can work and what needs to maybe be revised or what's no longer working. It's definitely a good new moon to set intentions with. It's a great one to work with. There is a lot of action. There's also a lot of tension, but oftentimes that tension leads us to our results. So overall, it does have a very positive vibe. Think about new beginnings when you're reflecting upon this past year and looking towards where you would like to go. Just think about new beginnings because that's really the strongest energy around this new moon. New moons are always about new beginnings, but this one is even much more intensely so. Chiron is also going to station direct right at the heels of this new moon, right before the new moon, Chiron will station. This makes us that much more focused about our own personal healing and happiness. And I say that that is a good thing. We no longer wanna be defined by what we feel limits us and blocks us. We wanna move forward with a fresh, clean slate and with the belief and the faith in all that's possible. Let me pull up the chart. Okay, so we have our Capricorn new moon, December 23rd, 2022, 5.17 a.m. Eastern time. And you see right here, the sun and the moon are aligned at one degree, 32 minutes of Capricorn. That's what happens when we have our new moon. And we see here that we've got Venus and Mercury and Pluto all in Capricorn. So there's our Capricorn, strong Capricorn energy, a strong energy about getting it all done. Again, making a plan, fresh starts, new beginnings. There's a seriousness to the energy. We see Jupiter over here at zero degrees of Aries in almost an exact square to this new moon in Capricorn. Again, this is action orientated. We want to take action. We're dealing with cardinal energy here. Just make sure you're thinking everything through, that you're being wise about it. We've also got Jupiter here in a semi-square aspect to Uranus. And this is all about our future. This is all about our freedom, our freedom and our future. What we need to feel free and safe for ourselves personally on the individual level. Being real with ourselves about where have we been overdoing it in some area of our lives. There could be a lot of positive breakthroughs here with this energy. Just be honest with yourself. Now, Venus over here in Capricorn is in opposition to Black Moon Lilith over here at 17 Cancer. This is about our body wisdom. This is about what we might be repressing, especially when it comes to connection, connection with others, connection with self. Where are we not allowing ourselves to be, you know, to be full in our totality of who we truly are? Are we not expressing ourselves fully and in the most color? See, the thing is, Venus struggles in the sign of Capricorn because Venus just wants to be free. And in Capricorn, she puts a lot of limitations on herself. Just ask anybody that actually has Venus in Capricorn. The love nature is strong, it's stable, it's sturdy, it's very earthy and sensual and practical, but it can often feel repressed or like it takes a lot to get to the nuts and bolts. And so while Venus is in Capricorn, we can feel like that. And so this, is, this energy is asking us to go deep, go within and ask ourselves, what do I really want? Where am I not being authentic to myself? 
or to others in my life? Where am I hiding my light? What am I afraid will happen if I let it shine? You know, these are all the questions that you're going to likely be pondering under this energy. Pay attention to what you feel. Lots of reevaluations happening right now as well. This tends to happen as we move towards the end of a year anyway, as we move towards the end of a calendar year anyway, but this new moon is also really ramping this up. Jupiter and Aries really ramping this up. And there's some potential for some really strong positive action with the proper recognition. If you are Aries rising, this new moon is going to take place in your 10th house. If you're Taurus rising, it's your 9th. Gemini, it's your 8th. Cancer, it's your 7th. Leo, it's your 6th. Virgo, it's your 5th. Libra, it's your 4th. Scorpio, it's your 3rd. Sagittarius, it's your 2nd. Capricorn, it's your 1st. Aquarius, it's your 12th. And Pisces, it's your 11th. Let's get a tarot card for this new moon. The world. The world is actually the tarot card that is ruled by the planet Saturn. And Saturn rules over the sign of Capricorn. So very fitting that we have this card. And the world is all about the wrap up of one cycle and moving on to the next phase into a new cycle. There's a little bit of a pause before we get there. And that's what this end of the year brings in. And that's what this new moon is all about. Looking back at how we've come full circle and about where we would like to go next and believing in ourselves to get there. Remember that we are all eternal students here in this game called life. The world is the very last card of the tarot deck, which means we're about to start a new journey. I'm choosing to take that very positively. There's a sense of freedom that comes when we see the world. I hope that this has helped you. May you have a wonderful holiday season, and I will be back soon with more content. Bye.